the majority of information that your brain is looking for to make a judgment about how somebody else is thinking, feeling, or intending towards you. The majority of that information your brain wants is mainly visual, partly wants to hear the tone of the voice, and it doesn't really care what anybody's saying. We've got one of the world's leading experts in body language. His work is derived from evolutionary psychology. His techniques have been used by G7 leaders, including Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper. How you change people's minds yeah. using moving pictures. And you change their minds by changing their feelings. 93% of your communication is your nonverbal, your body language and your tonality. What are your thoughts on that? Well, if that's the case, you can throw out all those books that are behind you. Here's what that study actually means. And it's important because it helps us understand what body language could be really about for us which is to really hone down on your skill of yeah. being able to be dependable, yeah. non-verbally in front of people, for me, yeah. is the first step to being yeah. good in sales. Here's one that gets me. Jeremy, what keeps you up at night? Like, how have you deserved? Like, are you actually concerned? Did you actually come in the office going, I wonder what keeps this guy, I'm concerned about this guy's sleep. Well, yeah. Why is it vital to understand when you're trying to persuade? So yeah, okay. Look, uh, here's what I'm gonna tell you is that the all right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Closers Are Losers. Now, we have a special guest today. If you know me, if you've been through our virtual training courses, if you're you know, one of our clients, or maybe you're just kind of following me around on Instagram or somewhere out in the world, you know I train a lot about tonality, body language, the right questions at the right time, how to disarm prospects. And if if you're in sales and, you, and you've read a lot of books on sales, you're going to know that most books don't really teach you that. They might teach you some theory, they might teach you some questions or you know some rebuttals for, for different objections. But top 1% salespeople understand that it's all really in your body language and your tone and getting the prospects to let their guard down. And that's really where the sale's made. It's not made by, do you want the red one or the blue one, some option close at the end, that's not when they decide to buy. So we got one of the world's leading experts in body language. Now I started studying this guy, I read one of his first books. I've actually, I went, it's back here on my shelf. That book was, I wanna say, I've got it right here, Mark. It's the- oh, we're waiting, waiting, we're waiting. No, I, winning body I, language. I know, it's control the conversation without saying a word, reading body language. I love that for salespeople. And it, and it really it really opened my eyes to body language and those type of things. So we got Mark Bowden here. Now I gotta I gotta give him I gotta give him his props here. His work is derived from evolutionary psychology. Now his techniques have been used by G7 leaders, including Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper. I've heard of Justin Trudeau, but I did, I'm gonna I'm gonna look this other Harper guy up, right? Yeah, look him up. And he's credited with pioneering nonverbal analysis of human behavior where it pertains to influence and or persuasion. So, if you're a salesperson or a coach or a consultant or a, an entrepreneur or business owner, and you're trying to scale, you're trying to sell more, you want to learn what we're gonna talk about. Now, most notable is is his gesture plane system or the specific use of open palm hand gestures and what he coins is the truth plane. I love that, the navel here. And we're gonna talk a lot about that. And we're gonna talk about several of his books. Mark, welcome welcome to the show. How are you, man? Well, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really happy to be here, to be honest. Yeah. Jeremy, okay. because uh, because I've been following you, you've been following me. Uh, you know, you're a sales uh, trainer that I really respect. I love your content because it's it gets to the heart of for me what sales is, which is behavioral change. Yeah. You know, if, if somebody was saying to me, "Hey, what do you think it is that Jeremy Miner does?" I I, I would go like, "He calls himself a sales trainer. Be sure. be that what it be that what it is." Yeah. Uh, but I would say, look, really, what he's about is changing people's behavior and that's what i'm fascinated with so yeah, i feel it, like i'm a, i'm with a kindred spirit oh it's me too I, I bought i bought two or three of your courses and stuff i'm you know i'm i'm sure i'm like you i'm just an ever learning student I, i'm like i know one percent i'm just you know before i pass away can i at least know eight or nine percent and I'll, I'll be happy so i'm continually always learning and you know i've been following you for a while bought a bunch of your courses i love your your YouTube channel, the uh, behavioral pattern. We're going to talk yeah. about that today. Now, I've got a, I've got some really good questions I want to ask you. Great, go, go, go. All right, ahead. so let's let's start here. I, I want to. Uh, this is so important that everybody understands what we're going to talk about today with your tone and your body language because I cannot mm -hmm. stress so many salespeople, as you know, Mark. They think that they've got to get better at objection handling, and you know you can learn how to do that. 
but I'd rather learn how to prevent the objections from happening in the prospect's mind in the first place, right? Yeah, yeah so, I would totally agree. Yeah, so you went to school, Middlesex, you went to university, Middlesex University, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Over That's the correct, year. that's correct. And you you studied performing arts. I'm going to talk yeah. about that today. Um, you talked uh, you, physical theater and mm. psychology, and that psychology. Why did you go? Why did you go into that performing arts? Because performing arts is actually, I can see why where you've learned some of your what you're trained. Yeah. Mm. Well, actually, pretty much all of what I do really goes back to that performing arts element yeah. and visual theater which in my mind is how you change people's minds yeah. using moving pictures. Mm. That's it. And you change their minds by changing their feelings. And though you can change people's feelings in all kinds of ways, you can talk to them, there are, there are all kinds of ways of intervening. What I found was the quickest way to change somebody's feelings was to influence and persuade them by giving them something to copy. Mm. So getting them to mirror you. Okay. which they're going to do naturally anyway. Yeah. So being a really great leader of people's emotions mm -hmm. could move them through those emotions and change their mind. Yeah. And so in order to, to uh, be able to produce emotions, you know, on command, one of the best ways of doing it is knowing the movement of that feeling yeah. so that people can easily copy it. So that's, yeah. that's, what I was fascinated with, telling stories with pictures, moving people, and yeah. that moved from the performing arts to to business and then politics and politics. And, and then here you are. And I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk to you about some people and politics that you work with because like, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not really into politics. Like yeah, I've got friends that are on Republicans and friends that are Democrats. Yeah. So I'm kind of just like I, I just like to watch everybody fight each other, but it's fascinating to me. But I'm more like right in the middle. I love to watch how they communicate, though. Yeah. You know, because and we're going to talk. I've got some different politicians that I'm going to ask you your thoughts right. on Love the communication it. styles here in a bit. This will be interesting. It's really important. Now, how did how did it um, learning that in school? How did that help you become like a body language expert? Yeah. So in order to change other people's feelings by creating moving pictures for them, human beings moving in a certain way, you need to be able to choreograph those human beings. You need to be able to get them to do something very, very specific that yeah. will cause somebody else to do the action or the thought or the behavior you want. It's no yeah. good just guessing. I mean, you can, you might get it right, but you don't know whether you can get it right the next time. And so I really needed to understand a, a, a process by which we could choreograph moving pictures that would get an exact result out yeah. of that. Audience. Something predictable rather than predictable. hoping yeah. it works out. Yeah. yeah, predictable, not only predictable, um, but elegant in terms of its economics. Yeah. Because let's take, you know, how this might run in politics, for example. In politics, you don't have an endless budget to change somebody's mind. Right. To move them from one side to the other side or the middle to yeah. either side. It's not an endless budget. You've got a certain amount of dollars to do it. And yeah. so you need to know the economical way yeah. of, of doing that. And also, you've only got so much time yourself, sure. and energy. Yeah. So you've got to pick the right people. Yeah. And then you've got to find the really elegant way, economical way yeah. of moving them to where you need them to be. Yeah, it's, it's so true. And it's interesting in the politics because I, I I find it quite fascinating because I'm like, these politicians, I'm like, they don't, I don't think they get understanding how to, how they can actually move, let's say a Republican to this side or a Democrat to this side. If we're talking about US politics. I, yeah, I know yeah, there's sure. different names in, in Canada sure. and other parts of the world, but yeah. you know, it's like, they just, they're like, oh, those evil liberals right. or those evil MAGA Republicans. And I'm just like, all you're doing by saying that is you're just getting that side more defensive where they're digging in their shields. It's not like you're winning them over. They're like, oh, I'm an evil MAGA, you know, Republican. You're right. I bow down to you. Let me join <laughs> yeah. your you team. You hit the nail you know? on the head. I'm, you hit the I'm nail signing on the head. up for your side. I'm Brilliant. signing up for your yeah, side. Yeah. And I'm just like, that's why it's 50-50. But then you look at, uh, you know, maybe some other politicians in the past. I don't know much about their policies or anything, but you look at, like, say, somebody like uh, President Reagan, right? If mm -hmm. you study his more communication styles, mm -hmm. the playful tone, he was yeah. playful with the reporters that might have attacked him. And so now they, how, if you're playful with them and they attack you, it's kind of like you kind of neutralize them or maybe they vote you for you, but yeah. at least don't hate you. You yeah. know, they have respect for you, you know? And look at the elections, he won in landslides. 
you yeah. know, because he was able to take the other side and move some of them over to his way of thinking. Able to change their behavior. Happy. Able to change happy. their thought, their thinking. Yes. Yeah. And I, I think and some course, politicians just, they attack and all they, all they they don't realize that they're just causing the other side to become more defensive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, here's what I'd say to that is you're absolutely right. Now, at the same time, yeah. it's very expensive to change the person's mind who's right over the other side. Yeah. Okay? That's super expensive. Yeah. So what we're trying to often do is find the people who haven't yet decided or are at that point in their life yeah. where they, they feel a change is necessary. Right. And so what we could do is go, why don't we make them the enemy make us more like more likable and therefore pull yeah. them more towards more to us. the center yeah more you yeah just, just shifting yeah. them over so maybe the you know there might be that 25 20 or 25 percent on each side that they're just going to vote that way no matter what you yeah, know yeah. They, yeah. they could hate the guy or girl that's yeah. on their side but they're just hate the other side worse right we used to we used to say in the uk that that if you put a a, a tub of lard there which is you know yeah. just like well you know what a tub of lard is <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah put a tub of lard there as the leader they vote for it anyway no they, exactly. it doesn't matter who the leader is yeah they, they're in they're entrenched and we're never going to change them their minds we don't in fact we don't care in fact what we do is we don't care about our side either the people yeah. who are entrenched we don't care what they think of our leader what we care about and that's why they'll come to us and we'll go with that we hate what you've done with the leader it's like i don't care you're gonna vote for them anyway don't, you're gonna vote for them anyways. <laughs> gonna, yeah, yeah. It, exactly you know and then you you probably get that 20 percent on either side that if you learn the right communication skills, if you can get them to kind of let their guard down, you could actually move a lot of them over to your side and then you win in a landslide. I mean, heck, if you if you win like 53% to 47%, that's like a landslide. Well, that's it. I mean, if you say, look, there's 20%, I, I'd go, is there? Where, how do I get hold of them? Because you yeah. only need, in most electoral systems, you don't need much to get a majority, it's you so know? True. And an, and a majority isn't the popular opinion. A yeah. majority is is the opinion that r wins under the circumstances. Yeah, it's it's so true, hundred percent. All right, now we're gonna, this this is interesting. We're going to go through this now. Okay. Um, okay, so you're an expert on body language analysis. Okay, um, why is why is body language? Because you always read the books. You know, any mm -hmm. book behind me or any any book over here in this office mm -hmm. on sales is always going to say. You know, there's always the same things: ABCs of closing. Uh, no, sales yeah. is a numbers game. Uh, you got to be a problem yeah, solver. Yeah. It's like I'll say, and I also say they always say ninety three percent of your communication is your nonverbal, your body language, and your tonality. What are your thoughts on that? Well, if that's the case, you can throw out all those books that are behind you because I don't because they're useless, aren't they? We, we you know, it's like how you don't need to read any of those because all yeah. you need to do is, you know, the author should just be miming them to you. No, obviously that's not true. Listen, yeah. if I tell you that's the Moravian study, which is yeah. which is misunderstood or or yeah. or, or mythologized. Yeah. Here's what that study actually means, and it's important because it helps us understand what body language could be really about for us, yeah. which is the majority of information that your brain is looking for to make a judgment about yeah. how somebody else is thinking, feeling, or intending towards you. The yeah. majority of that information your brain wants is mainly visual. Yeah. It partly wants to hear the tone of the voice, and it yeah. doesn't really care what anybody's saying. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So if you want to know, is Mark happy or sad? Is he engaged or disengaged? Yeah. You're not listening out for my words primarily. You're looking at what I'm doing, and you're yeah. hearing the tonality of my voice. Now, if what I say is yeah. very, very different from what you think I'm feeling, your yeah. bias goes towards what I'm feeling, not what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. That's what Moravian study tells us. Yeah. It's so true because, you know, I always give this example. It's like, you know, telemarketer calls. Right. And within the first five to 10 seconds, you're like, oh, not interested. Right. But you, did, you didn't really hear their words. You just heard their tone right. and, and the tonality because it, it's like it triggers your survival part of your brain. Right. You know, everybody calls it something different. Some people call it the reptilian part of your brain. Sure. I, I went to school for behavioral science and social dynamics. So, I know, you know, like, you know, a few things on this, but it's, it's like your, you don't even hear, it could be like, Hey, you just won $3 billion, the lottery. <laughs> we just need to send the check over to you. Like not interested. 
because right. they just sound like a salesperson. So it's like we have right. these defensive mechanisms in our survival part of our brain, right? So it's like if we're walking across the street to the grocery store and all of a sudden we hear a lady just yell really loud, what do we do? It, you know, survival part of our brains were like, you, you know, am I okay? Like you just react real quick. Like, am I safe? Is the tiger going to eat me or whatever? And then it takes you, you know, you know, probably know more about this than I do. It's been right. so long since school, but you know, how many, how long does it take before the words get into what do they call it? The midbrain where it starts yeah. to interpret what she just said. And then your neocortex is like, oh, she just was telling her son to be careful crossing the street. <laughs> right. Which right. The first yeah. thing you reacted to was the tone, not the first word. thing you'd, you'd react to is what we'd call the primal cadence, yeah. which there's some differentiations between the notes of her voice, which yeah. would have triggered your instinct yeah. uh, into an instant reaction. At that point, uh, your the part the language center of your brain would have closed down completely. It's not even interested what she's saying. Yeah. yeah. It's not interested at all. Yeah. After all of that, the language center would open up and maybe go, do you remember what she said? Yeah. But that's going to be highly distorted now yeah. by by the feeling that yeah. was there. So look, yeah. just knowing that, if you know what primal cadence sounds like, yeah. you can uh, warn people off stuff mm -hmm. without telling them yeah. you know or you can move them comfort them and move them towards you i mean you've got you've yeah. got lovely stuff around around cadences with with um you know or, or what i might call approaches with with curiosity and confusion and playfulness sure. and challenge yeah. and concern yeah. all of those for me are are approaches to a situation like what if i what if i'm curious here yeah. what will that do to them now what you've got is 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 you've got fairly good ideas around what it's most likely to do to that other person in yeah. that situation of course it's yeah. not going to be 100 but it's straight, like yeah. it's like better than it's like it's so much better than nothing like a yeah. strategy a strategy yeah. and technique yeah. will win over luck yeah, in the long term. Uh, yeah it's like you know most salespeople. it's like they're you know throwing it's like they're taking a bucket of mud and like right. putting it up against the wall like hoping yeah. and praying that slide uh 76 is going to magically convert the prospect divine i'm just like you're not understanding like you've already oh. lost them at that point you know it's a hopium oh. drug i'm like you're always taking the hopium drug like you you want to like be have something more predictable like you said it's not going to work a hundred percent of the time but can it work five times more effective than what you're doing yeah for oh, sure. so, well so much more than five so much more than five more. but i mean and, and here's what horror i mean you know what horrifies me even more is the person paying for that sales team to th i mean that's that's like i can just feel the the cash yeah, I mean, you'd running be running away i'll mean, uh, give you a surprise we have a few hundred we have a few fortune hundred clients here in america and we've got quite a few fortune 500 and 1000 and you'll go in and we'll do like sales audits and stuff. And we're just like, Whoa, you know, they're, right. they're doing like $9 billion a year in sales and they are going through the numbers because their salespeople, they have no idea. They don't even know what tonality is. You know, right. I, I, what our uh, chief uh, business development officer who's over our B2B stuff was on a call with a huge like dental implant company. Mm -hmm. and I love them. They're great. They do a hundreds of millions of dollars a year, right? So big company, no, no small potatoes. And he's like, hey, jump on here with me real quick. And I jumped on there for like five minutes. I'm like, so walk me through, like if I came to work for your company as like a new rep tomorrow, mm -hmm. what would my sales training consist of? And they're like, oh, well, we bring in this technician and they teach them how the dental implants work and where do they go and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, oh, oh I, I, meant like pro I didn't mean like product training. I meant like, you know, who trains them like, you know, how to use their tonality to, Right, right, right. Prospects to let their guard down and like who's training them like how to prevent objections in the prospect's mind and and really how to, you know, like what questions to ask at the right time that gets them to want to emotionally open up. Like what type of training are they going through for that? And they're sitting there like, uh, uh, and I could I could tell that I seeded some doubt, a lot of doubt there that they're like, you know, when, when you're asking those questions, they start to internalize and think deeper about what you just asked, right? Because I'm yeah. verbal pacing the question out. And they're just like, when do we get started? You know, so instead of a, you know, because that was a huge deal. You're talking to six, seven hundred thousand dollar deal or whatever. Most companies that size got to go through legal. It's going to take five, six months. They the funds are to us two weeks later, you know, but it's just <laughs> right. it's just triggering that curiosity and almost seeding doubt by how you use your tone. You can see doubt by how you use your tone in a sales situation that causes the prospect to feel so much internal tension that they might have 
much bigger problems than they originally thought they had. Right. You're, right? you're changing somebody's mind yeah. by having, by displaying an emotion. Yeah. around them i mean not necessarily that curiosity is an emotion but i mean it's a it's a, you, you, basically you're having a some kind of human spirit yeah in, in front of them you're a human that, being yes. yeah 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 that they can join in with yeah. and go and go yeah what it what if i was like that what if i yeah. was you know look you're leading people through behavioral change yeah, yeah. You, you're yeah. looking at it from their angle which means it can be confusing to yeah. you it's like man i don't i don't get I don't get this. So what? So yeah. what's happening here? Like, exactly. I, I, I literally, understand. I literally start every keynote with this one question. I said, if I asked you to describe the word sales or selling in one word, what would that word be? And everybody's like, oh, persuasion, uh, solution, uh, pushy, closing, money, like all this stuff. I'm like, okay, mm. I like that. Okay, what if we took all that those words we we put it in one word, and that word was change. Like yeah, you said, totally. all selling is change. Totally. That's it. Totally. You know, all selling is change, you know, and it's how good you are getting the prospect to view in their mind that by them changing their situation, that is far less risky for them than right. them doing nothing at all, staying in the status quo and their problems stay the same, which is more risky. Well, and to that point, you know, if people don't can't agree with that for some reason, let me take you through this yeah. idea. As a salesperson, I would say you, you have to be in the business of how do you change other people? Yeah. And why would that be? Well, if you're in sales, it means that either people aren't buying. I mean, because if people are already buying, you don't need any sales. They're exactly. already buying. Okay? Yeah, it's all yeah. great. So they're either people aren't buying. Either they are buying, but they're bu not buying enough. Either they are buying, but they're not buying yours. They're buying somebody else's. Yeah, okay? yeah. Or they are buying yours, but they're buying the wrong thing of yours, which means that they're always upset because they're going, this didn't work. And somebody's the selling them the, sold, wrong, yeah. the wrong the wrong thing but yeah. but what's happening so you now need to change people who are not buyers or buyers of the wrong thing or not buying enough yeah. into a behavior that you need which yeah. means as somebody in sales you i would say you've got one of the most difficult jobs in the world which is you're going to change another human being's behavior yeah. that's hard it, it that's is because, really hard. because you know i always say you know all selling is change and then i'm like but here's your problem human beings don't like change even I though we say we do so right. it's like, this is what you're going up against with pretty much every prospect you're talking to, to some degree, is they're afraid of change. See, we're, we're afraid of, of that change. We have that fear of change. It's like, you know, you ever, I mean, you know, you always have the friend or relative or right. somebody that always complains about the relationship they're in. Like every time you talk to them and you're like, why don't they just break up with them? Or why don't they get a divorce? Good. But it's yeah. because they're afraid of change. Well, they're so, here's, so then here's where we need to go next is why are they afraid of, of change? Well, the reason yeah. is, is they don't trust the future. Yeah. Okay? They, yeah. it's, it's unpredictable. Like, it's, I don't know unknown. what's, it's, it's what's going to happen next. I've got some good familiar. ideas. I've got yeah. some good ideas, but I can't, like, I'd be, it, it would be folly to go, yeah. like, this will happen and this will happen and this will happen. I mean, I'm yeah. kind of hoping that gravity, you know, stays a constant. I'm hoping, I'm hoping right. some fairly physical constants. But, yeah. but outside of that, yeah. I'm living in a world of trust. Yeah. where I trust what will happen next and trust. Yeah. And so if you come to me, Jeremy, and you say, look, you know, I see you got this problem and like, yeah. you know, you I can know help you. Yeah, I can help you. And you know, it's right that you need to, yeah. I'm my brain is still going. Yeah. But I mean, I don't, I don't know what's happening tomorrow. It's the fear of the unknown. Right. See, you're, you're, you're more, you're more attached to what is familiar to you, even if you don't like it that much over something that is unknown and unfamiliar to you. Right. So here's so here's where I go with this and, yeah. and creating behavior is what do I know? I know I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I know right now I've got Jeremy in front of me. Sure. And so how do I trust tomorrow? I yeah. lodge tomorrow in you. Yeah. I go, well, I don't know what's going to happen with this product or this service or whatever. But this yeah. this person in front of me, yeah. do I know what's going to happen with them? Can I predict anything? So the more predictable you are within yeah. certain boundaries because there's yeah. a there, as you well know there's some reasons yeah. to suddenly switch to curiosity or confusion sure. or playfulness mm -hmm. there's there's yeah. pattern interrupts within yeah. that but yeah. it has to be a baseline of like this is dependable this yeah. is utterly dependable and yeah. so that's why you know to to really hone down on your on your skill of yeah. being able to be dependable yeah. non-verbally in front of people for me yeah. is, is the first step 
to being yeah. good in sales. It's 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 so true because you're what you're doing. Uh, typically, I find that objections are you, you know triggered because of uncertainty in the prospect's mind. Now, uncertainty sure. is caused by the salesperson, not the prospect. Right. It's like the salesperson is like what you're saying, how you're using your tone, your body language. If they can see you, even if they can't see you, because your your body language affects your tone, right? You know, like I like I said, like you know, a lot of people are like, well, Jeremy, where did you learn tonality? Where did you learn body language? And I'm like, well, it wasn't from like sales trainers, you know, it was I learned body language from people like Mark and, and other experts in body language. Like you have to go outside of that. I learned, you know, I learned tonality from, you know, Hollywood. Uh, well, actually, I didn't go to acting school, but I hired, uh, have you ever heard of, um, oh, what's, what's my guy's name? Larry, Larry Moss. He's a big, he, right. he trained I'm not, like, I'm not, uh, not heard of him, but no. Yeah, so he uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, you look at right. Hollywood actors and actresses, and one of the first things they they train you is they train you how to use your facial expressions to elicit different tonalities to cause the audience, which the TV viewers, movie viewers, to stay engaged in the movie. Yeah, right? yeah. it's crazy, right? Because yeah. if Tom Cruise was just one of my favorites, was just sitting there talking like this with one monotone and he sounded like this the whole time you'd be like oh this is really boring like you're just going to turn it off you know right. but his body language his facial expressions it all affects your tone i always say your facial expressions are the remote control to your tone so even well, if you're on the phone calling leads let's say if you're selling life insurance you have to still have facial expressions that if i want to have a confused tone oh how do you, how do you mean by stress i have to change my facial expression because if i'm Try having a confused tone without moving your <laughs> yeah. face that you can't, you can't do it. Well, let, let me push this even a little bit further for you here, Jeremy, because when you go to that, go to the cinema or you watch something on Netflix yeah. and you look at that actor and, you know, they've given you a great experience because, because, you know, you're thinking, God, they really embodied that character and they were really feeling that emotion right yeah. then. I could feel yeah. it. Yeah. It's like, that's not true. Even if they were feeling the, the emotion, and it's debatable whether they were, okay? Yeah. Even if they were feeling it, it ended at least six months ago. Yeah. And sure. what you're getting is the information that your brain needs, the visual and sonic information and yeah. context mm -hmm. that your brain needs to, to have that emotion yourself mm -hmm. and to project it onto them. Yeah, you you should be having the acting award because the emotion was yours and you pretended it was theirs because it's safer. It's a good fit. It's like now I can feel fear. Now I can feel love. Now I can. But it's not mine. It's it's theirs. It, yeah. You know, theater, TV, film. It's a brilliant manipulation. Well, they're tri theory. they're triggering those emotional drivers in your mind. Yeah. But then we make them theirs. We exactly. go, yeah, so the key right. is, the key is like, what are the triggers? What are the triggers that's going to, that are going to trigger your clients with curiosity yeah. and confusion yeah. and playfulness yeah. and, and, yeah. and challenge and concern, yeah. Yeah. you know, you, you, the salesperson, you've got to do it. So, yeah. cause you've got to lead first. It's like any audience, any group, they will not start cheering and still until they hear the performers cheering. They yeah. will not make a loud noise until somebody on stage or in the film makes a loud noise. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna. They're not gonna risk that. Yeah. No, no, no. Nobody well, buying is gonna risk being concerned until they see somebody else yeah. being concerned. Then yeah. they'll join in and go, "Yeah, let's get, yeah, yeah, yeah let's get really concerned about." Yeah, about it's very it. valid. It's it's uh it's interesting because I you know I always tell our clients I'm like you know what are the, the what are the two biggest emotional drivers that cause a human being to want to change? It's the the it's 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 pain. Mm -hmm. the fear of future pain mm -hmm. because if you can't help the prospect relive their pain of their situation or their problems they don't feel any need to change and if they don't feel any need to change that's why you get objections that's why they don't buy because a lot of people are like oh i just feel bad like asking these questions because i don't like to my prospects to tell me their pain well i'm like well if they don't if you can't help them relive their pain uh, they don't feel any need to change so you're yeah. you're actually hurting them because they stay in the status quo. Well, that's why, as as, as a salesperson, if you any and if you want to do behavioral change, which is you're going to have to do that if you want to be any good at it, yeah. you have to enjoy other people's pain. And I don't mean that you sit there right. and go, "I love it, this person's pain," yeah, right. but you must delight in it, and you must want to hear it, and you must want to engage with it, because unless they elicit their pain, 
They won't tell you what they believe is 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 in the way of the better state yeah. for them. They won't tell you the barriers, which means you can't yeah. dissolve the barriers or get round them. Yeah. They won't name that thing yeah. for you. You yeah, know, they're the going to stay, you stay, gonna stay guarded. They'll right? stay very guarded. And the moment you say, "Look, what it, what is the thing that's really stopping you right now from get from moving?" You know, yeah. what is that thing? Because if they name that thing in their language, and yeah. you get the name of what I would call that demon which is yeah. that thing that's that's really you know, screwing up their their life. Because everybody would have everything that they wanted in life if it wasn't for the things stopping them. It's so true. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, you know, yeah, it's like it salespeople, it's like salespeople, they ask these questions and they get you know vague, generalized surface level answers. And I'm like, well, it's because of how you're asking the question. Because as you know, your, your tonality is really how the prospect interprets the intention behind everything you say. That's right. how they interpret the meaning behind why you're asking the question. So I'll give you an example. We talked about, you know, you, you've probably seen me in some of those reels. I talk about like a confused tone. Yeah, yeah. And some of our more amateur salespeople that might follow me, which I love them. They're like, oh, you can't be confused. You have right. to sound like an expert. And I'm like, I don't mean you go through the product. You're like, oh, I don't know how it works. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, know like, that's not what I mean by that. But like, <laughs> let's say, as you know, like if a prospect gives you some type of an emotional word, they're like, oh, this X, Y, Z problem. I'm just, just really stressed. But, and they give yes. you that emotion. I'm, I might lean in, as you know, I'm going to put my hand mm. on the chest, right? As you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, stress. Yeah. Now what happens right there is their brain basically tells them, oh, he didn't understand what I meant by stress. I need to explain that better. And then when they right. explain that better, they clarify that and they emotionally start to open up. I couldn't have got them to do that unless I had more of a confused tone. That's where that right. triggers. So that. Here's, here's one way I can I, I would go with with it because look, there are so many approaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When if somebody says stress, there are so many ways you could approach that. Yeah. And I think you know we can we can we'll find approaches that work and we'll find sure. approaches that work in certain situations. Here's the approach that, and I'm not I'm not doing yeah, sales yeah, yeah. but but you know i do behavioral change yeah often what i'll do if somebody names the feeling is yeah. i delight in it yeah yeah i i, I don't judge it i don't get concerned because often they'll give me a, a feeling which is really it, which is a concerning feeling yeah okay yeah. and i want them to get deeper into that yeah as well yeah and so and so they'll go oh you know no i get incredibly anxious about that and i'll go oh yeah anxious so it's like so now it's like it's this is this is good like yeah. let's now we're getting somewhere yeah you're so they'll up. they'll get deep oh yeah and really anxious and i sweat I like and that. I, oh yeah yeah sweating yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah, now so your, tone, your tone is shifting and it's like yeah. it's making them want to open up more yeah i'm excited because now they're getting positive feedback about these yeah. not what would they expect somebody usually to do i get anxious oh well don't feel like that yeah yeah don't yeah, worry, yeah, we'll, no, don't worry, don't worry. We'll, stop. No, no, no. we'll solve that. We'll stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't want you to feel anxious uh, about yeah. it. I mean, look, have a, feel good about it. I mean, you, look, you can feel yeah. good about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, they can't. No. They've told you yeah. how they're feeling. Yeah. Like, let's get into that. Yeah. Let's oh, get how, into oh, that to find you, our way out of that. How do you mean by stress? Like, <laughs> no, it's like <laughs> right. a confused concern tone, right? Right. So your approach there is doing exactly the same thing. It's, it's yeah. getting me deeper in there. Because yeah. we we don't know what we're really going to get out of until we get deep into it. I agree. And if it's too shallow, like who cares? Yeah, it's a surface. Like <laughs> that's why you get all the I want to think it over objections of your sales because you couldn't get them to emotional. It's not it's not like you're you can't just walk up to a prospect and tell them like, hey, can you tell me your two biggest problems that keep you <laughs> right. like they're not going to open up because they know what you're <laughs> trying to do. So right. I've got to elicit them to like emotionally open up and actually feel comfortable enough to do that because of the trust. Right. And I always Absolutely. talk about like, you know, a lot of salespeople are taught that like, Oh, well, you build trust by, Oh, how are you doing today? How's your day going? Or, you know, did you see the game last night? And they try to build rapport that way. And I'm like, uh, be careful with that because they're used to every salesperson's ever tried to sell them asking what type of predictable questions. I mean, how you right. doing? how's your day going? Here's one that gets me. Um, uh, what, what, Jeremy, what keeps you up at night? Oh, God, it's <laughs> the worst it's like, B2B how, question how, ever. Yeah, how have, like, how have you deserved? Like, yeah. Are you actually concerned about what Let me you, open are you up actually, and tell you. Did you actually come in the office going, I wonder what keeps this guy? I'm concerned yeah. about this guy sleeping. Well, it, it's, 
It's so true because when, when you say the like, hey, how, how's your day going today, John, on a, on a sales call, your prospect really interprets that as I'm just trying to get you to like me so I can sell you my thing. So right. you, you like actually start to lower your status in their mind as like salesperson trying to sell me something, the guard comes up. So like, I, you know, playful tone, we talk about that. You let's say you get on a Zoom call, Zoom call with a, a client or a prospect or whatever. And they're like, hey, how are you doing today, Jeremy? Well, where do I want to use a playful? How do I get them to let their guard down? Because most people would be like, oh, I'm doing great. Just working hard. That's not bad, but it doesn't really help you. So right. I might lean in. I'm like, oh, you know, just trying to stay out of trouble. Are you guys getting in trouble over there? They're like, oh, <laughs> I'm sure you're not getting in trouble. Or I'd always do that. Like, oh, you know, just hanging out, being the boring guy. What about you? I'm sure right. you're not boring. See, it's all about disarming them. Absolutely. The first thing I say to people is that if they're doing behavioral changes, your number one objective is to improve people's mood. Yeah. And don't and and don't move on to anything else until yeah. you have sensed, yeah. you know, a degree of mood improvement. Because yeah. now you're the person who comes in and improves people's mood. You don't need to do it massively. Yeah. So it's just just enough. Yeah. So it's like, well, this is already a better yeah. feeling. You can start seeding it throughout the sales call from the very first words out of your mouth, you're always, what I always train is, you know, I, I talk about the ABDs of selling, like always mm -hmm. be disarming, always be disarming. <laughs> like from That's the nice. first words out of your mouth to the end of the transaction, everything you're doing, asking, saying is all intended to, to get the prospect to keep their guard down. Because when the guard goes up, that's when you start having problems. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so so okay. here's, here's, here's a question that I go to all, all the time. I'd love your yeah. feedback on this, uh, especially in you know, calls where, where it's uh video i'll say yeah. so look uh, you know where exactly are you in the world right now yeah yeah because yeah. if i can get their location then they're, they're not likely to lie about their location and if they do it's like well that's an interesting indicator they wouldn't yeah. even tell me where yeah. they were in the world yeah. right now i i like that one just that thing of the location because yeah. it means that i might be able to accept something that they're saying i might oh even God. just be able to go you know with so it, i mean it seems seems yeah. pathetic but you know okay yeah. well what's the what's the weather like oh it's sunny you yeah. know what it was sunny here yesterday as yeah. well and now yeah now we've got a, a, a some kind of sense of we share the same weather yeah you know yeah, yeah, so yeah true. some kind of location together Sure. Yeah. If you sell like virtually other people in other parts of the world, I love that. Yeah. And is it, you know, the thing you talk about Zoom, because a lot, a lot of times people will show up to Zoom calls, the prospect or prospects, if you're selling to companies and they'll have the videos turned off. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, I need to see them for their body language and stuff. And and a lot of salespeople, you know, we'll, we'll get some companies and they train them to be like, well, can you turn your video on? I, I really like to see who we might be working with. I'm like, oh, cringe. That's so bad. Like, don't, you know, it's like a weirdo, like a stalker. So yeah. you know, act confused a little bit. Hey, is your, uh, is your video not, not working or what? And a lot of times people are like, oh no. And they'll just like feel embarrassed and they'll just turn right. it on. Right. And if they're, if they're not like, well, I don't want to have my video on. Well, what's going on over there, Jane? It's three thirty. Are you still in your pajamas? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turn the video on. It's like so. Here's yeah. what I often do, yeah. especially if it's a large group. I'll say so. Look, here's what I've noticed about virtual meetings like ours. If you can see me and I can see you, this meeting goes much quicker. We're going to understand each other so much better, and you can get exactly what you need from me almost uh, immediately. So, listen, what do you want to do about that? Yeah, click on the video. Just made him a deal. Yeah, exactly. Just made him a deal. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, you know? it's, all, it's all, I guess, I, you know, we could probably go on for 17 different hours. Okay, I want to talk about truth. I want to talk about yes. your, your your methodology, truth playing. Why, yeah. why is it vital to understand uh, when you're trying to persuade? So, yeah, okay. Look, uh, here's what I'm going to tell you, is that the horizontal height yeah. that you have your hands will have the most fundamental effect on the emotions, the feelings, and the intentions that other people will have about you and you will have about them. So yeah. let me just give you an example of this. Actually, what you'll notice is in this situation here, I predominantly have my hands at chest height. Yeah. And this is really good for me because yeah. it keeps my energy up. Okay, yeah. it keeps my heart rate and breathing rate up. You yeah. mirror that, not only you, Jeremy, yeah. but everybody watching this right. as well. If you're watching this right now, you'll be mirroring this tone of voice. Here's yeah. what I want you to notice. You're not going to see this, but I'm just going to drop my hands down by my sides. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let that impulse uh, affect my voice and uh, 
it's actually it's affecting the amounts of oxygen and carbon dioxide that are going around my brain and you're all already finding it hard not to interrupt me aren't you jeremy because it's it's like and, and this why, is going why downhill is it, why quick. is it bad to hide your hands oh well insufficient yeah. data people default to negatives yeah. Yeah. You know, if they can't see it, they're not optimists. But also when the hands go down by, by their side, it just so happens in this situation, they get hidden. If they go down to the side, heart rate and breathing rate go down. Now, look, now I'm going to push myself a little bit back. And yeah. we're going to show you open palm gestures at exactly yeah. navel height. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is a universal signal that says there cannot be any predators in the room. I'm saying there were predators in the room. I or you would yeah. be more like this. Guarded. Certainly, we would be more more tense. dark yeah. about stuff and tense. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but this says, "Look, there are the attack points on my body." Yeah, yeah. I'm open. I'm open. You can, you can trust. I'm me. open. So if I say to you, "Look, Jeremy, before we start, you know, just go for through for me. What are the big issues that are happening in the organization right now?" Sure. It's very different from me going, "Hey, Jeremy, before we start this, just what are the big issues?" That are going through with on with the organization right now yeah or maybe even before we start this what are the big issues that are going yeah. on with the organization right now so it's, my it's, guess is you'll tell me more um uh let's say valuable information if i do open palm gestures at exactly yeah. navel height now obviously yeah. there's caveats to that like there is to any structure yeah. like there's outliers and yeah. there's and there's situations yeah. But as a good general rule to start practicing with, start mm. practicing with that general rule. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and you know, because I've 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 read several of your, you know, two or three of your books, been through a couple of your courses as well. You talk mm -hmm. about thing. I think that's really interesting because so many so many people sell on on Zoom now, right? Because of right. the pandemic three or four years ago. But you know, they'll get on there and they'll be like they'll, they'll show up and they're just like <laughs> down know, here, yeah. you know, yeah, like yeah. like their heads here. Why why do we want to? Like when we're on Zoom, like sh show this to them, not like, you know, the primal stuff. I want you to talk about that. What's going on in their their survival? Because part. you're making see. decisions about the future, mainly visually. Yes. And so we're on a visual medium. And if mm -hmm. you can't see me or you can't see enough of me, yeah. how can you make predictions about the future? Well, you still will. Yeah. But if the less you can see, are you going to be more optimistic with your predictions or pessimistic? Yeah. You're going to be more pessimistic. So look, be, like there's no bad body language. There's just results that you wanted or didn't want. Yeah. It's probably no bad sales process. There's just results that you wanted or you didn't want. You just don't make the sale. You don't, don't make the sales. <laughs> you, you, know? don't the, you don't have the phone. <laughs> no, it's, it's, so, so, it's so true because, you know, I, I've, I've seen one of your courses. I can't remember which one. I took it maybe about a year ago, but you talked about on Zoom when you're kind of like down here and they can't see your hands. It's like they, they, they obviously don't know. They don't think you have a weapon. And even if they did, uh, of course they they're not, you know, they, you're not going to shoot them through the screen, but their, their, their mind like subconsciously is like, oh, I'm not safe. He, you know, maybe he's hiding a weapon. Tell us They about will that. create objections. Yeah. Now it's not that, look, you know, if I train with you, I'm going to get not strategies necessarily to deal with objections, but strategies to make sure they don't show up in the first place. Yeah. Okay. Objection prevention. Yeah showing giving more information will create a more optimistic mindset which means they are so much less likely to be objectionable yeah. with you now yeah. will it stop everybody no but when i compound that with other ways i have of setting up my environment setting up my strategy Mm -hmm. So that they're less likely to object, or in fact, you know, what I would set up, and I'm sure you do as well, is you actually want some objections, and you choose the objections, you lead them into some yeah. objections, and you don't lead them into yeah. other it's, it's so true. It's it's interesting. I'll, I'll give you, you might have, uh, most of this, we don't really train on the reels, the basic reels or YouTube, but like for our clients, but let's say if I'm a, let's say if I'm a salesperson in a retail store, let's say I'm a yeah, furniture yeah. salesperson, right? Yeah. So the, the, the customer, the prospect walks in the door. What's the first words out of the salesperson? Hey, welcome to the store. How can I help yeah, you? Yeah. Just looking. Right. It's just a knee jerk reaction, right? So you're going to get, then it's like awkward. Then they're like, oh, okay, well, let, let me know if you need anything. And then like, it's done. And I'm just like, what are you guys doing? So I'm going to give them the objection to help prevent it. So I'm like, hey, welcome into the store today. Are you guys just kind of out uh, looking around? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, we're looking. Oh, okay. Do you know what you're, do you know what you're possibly yeah. looking? 
before. Yeah. And then boom, I'm right into the conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've, I've had clients whereby, you know, they've gone all, oh, you know, but you know, I call up and I, and, and, and we say, you know, look, we're, we're here to talk about mutual funds and the dealer goes, yeah, we don't do mutual funds. And it's like, oh, well, sorry. You know, if ever you do, then, you know, you know where to find it. It's like, uh, it's like, well, what if you went into this wanting yeah. that? Yeah. wanting that because you could go if you wanted that hey we don't do mutual funds it's like yeah exactly that's why i'm calling you it's like how how does that work like, exactly. like how does that how do you like how do you yeah i i how do you do fixed income yeah. if you don't do mutual? like i'm so confused yeah it's so about- true like you know you, let's you know we'll go back because I, I want to ask you some questions about your thoughts on different communication styles of politicians yeah. i know you know a ton about this but I remember when I first got into sales, 22, my first job was door to door. And yeah. you know, I would copy everything. They would say, hey, I'm with, uh, we're out here in the neighborhood. I'm like, not interested, not interested. I'm like, okay, yeah. this doesn't make sense. So I'm like, I started learning about patent interrupts. You talk about patent interrupts, right? Yeah. So I'm like, how do I get them to view me not as a salesperson? Because if they don't even come to the door, like, what am I going to do? So I went out, you know, I got like a big clipboard with like some documents on it. Like I was taking a survey. I dressed, you know, khaki shorts. I dressed in these like, you know, the, the you know, the white old, ba- the new balance tennis shoes, you know, like for the grandpas. Right, right, yeah. At least and I put a tape measure on my side. I went and got like an orange construction vest, you know. So I, di- I didn't look like a salesperson at all, right? So I'd knock on the door. They didn't know if I was reading the meter, if I was a construction guy saying, hey, man, be careful. There's a pothole in the road or whatever. They'd always come out. And I'd be sitting there about six feet back, angled to the side, because I don't want to be a threat right up in the face, right? So I started learning about body language. And the sign of like, they'd come to the door and be like, yeah, are you guys the, um, you the the property owners here? And they'd be like, yeah, we're the property owners. What's going on? That's a pattern interrupt. I've interrupted yeah. that pattern where now I've triggered curiosity just by a confused tone. When I was when I was a lot younger, one of my first jobs was selling satellite dishes for satellite oh, TV. Oh my in gosh! The UK. I love that. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure you've been, you've maybe been there yourself. And uh, and this was before the days they were even broadcasting. So try and wow. sell something that has no. <laughs> oh, the big satellites. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 And so, um, and so, uh, you know, you knock on the door. And and I'd go, I'd go. Can you ask? Can you answer a question for me? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, yeah. Go. So I got a, a bet with my friend. Okay, we, we we're doing some door to door. Got a bet on which one of these houses will have the first satellite dish on them. Now I'm not going to tell you what he he says. Okay, yeah. I'm not going to tell you what I. But what do you reckon? What do you? Yeah. Do you just get them into like talking just about the neighborhood and like yeah. and like you know? And they might go, oh yeah, I'm never going to get one of those and i'd be like yeah yeah i mean i know i know that i mean yeah. you know no i mean obviously like i know that you know so th- just getting into conversation and and agreement and interrupting that it's a pattern and, and improving somebody's mood exactly. improving their day it's so, it's so true like i you know a lot of uh, keynotes i'll do pattern interrupts so yeah, yeah. everybody's used to like the speaker uh, just i already told her i'm going to be a little bit late I actually got Kayla in here. She came into my Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you want to meet Kayla? I'm saying hi. I'm saying hi. So Mark followed you and he's like, I heard the playful tone. Hey, He's like, he's like, I heard the playful tone. And it's like, did did she copy Jeremy? Did did he copy her? And then he found out that that we were boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah, he he, I learned a few things. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great to see you. Fantastic nice content. A lot. She, I like fantastic your. Content. I like that. That's good. You're not the one that's getting a satellite dish, right? If you have competition, that's good. I like that. <laughs> uh, so, so, anyways, uh, yeah. So, so all, a lot of times I'll go on stage, and and what is the audience used to? They're used to the speaker coming out, and it's fine. Like, hey, how's everybody going? Like, I'm so pumped to be here. I love Dallas or whatever. So they, you'll notice that they'll they'll go to their phones and the, you know they'll start checking their phones. Yeah. And they'll get up and go to the bathroom. So I'm like, how do I interrupt that pattern? So when I walk out. I just walk out, no, you know, not excited at all. I just walk out, the the MC's off the thing, and I walk out and I come to the front of the stage, don't say a word, and I just stand there. And I start looking around and I'll stand up there for 30 to 45 seconds. Everybody's like putting their phone down, they're like, what's going on? Like, what's, you know, what's up? Nobody's moving, you know, they're like, it's dead silent. Then I'll walk off the stage and I'll go walk, kind of walk through the crowd for a few seconds, and I'll just stop, put my hands there you know, for another 10 seconds and people are just like, what's going on? And then I'll take the microphone out and I'll do something where, you know, they're kind of like, oh, I'll be like, hey, uh, you know, I'm looking for this. 
why should I go with you? And they're like, oh, you should go with me because of blah, blah, blah. You know, it's all a pattern erupt. And now they're engaged. Now they're like, oh, crap, Jeremy's going to call on me. I have to pay attention. Just an example of pattern erupt. Right. Well, they're engaged. They're engaged. Exactly. Like they've got something to do. Yes. You know, they're and it's so easy that, that um, you know, the, the oh, there, there's a there's a little little diagram. Let me just uh, draw it up as 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 best I best I can here. Hold on there one second. Okay. Yeah. There's a, a salesperson and a customer yeah. there. Which is the salesperson and which is the customer? Interesting. I would say the smaller person's the salesperson. Yeah, okay. So most people will go for, well, it's the bigger person because our expectations of ah. the salesperson is like they are aggressive, they are pushy. Mm. Okay. Interesting. And okay. and look, I mean, there's no right answer yeah. to this, yeah. but it does tell you, given that, you yeah. know, most people are going to go, oh yeah, that that big one, that's the sales they're aggressive. Person. They're trying to be dominant yeah. Yeah. in some way. It's yeah. a pattern interrupt to yeah. not be dominant. Now that doesn't mean being subdominant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but just some other approach. Yeah. Other yeah. than yeah. that. Yeah, you you, you would pattern interrupt like is is because I here's why I said that in my mind, I'm I'm viewing as the as the potential customer that uh, in society salespeople have a lower status. So I'm the prospect salesperson's lower status because they're trying to sell me something they're pushing. Right. Interesting. Right. Right, yeah. and that is, and and yeah, that is a a, yeah. a an approach that people can take is going, oh, you know, I'm at a I'm at a loss in, and like you yeah. said, and I've I've said the same. It's like, but they've taken the meeting, yeah. But like they who, didn't. Who has to. the problems? The yeah. prospect or you? The prospect has the problems. Who can solve those? You do. You're the. So why are you qualifying to them? You yeah. got to learn how to get them to qualify to you. I yeah. always talk about that. I I learned, you know, my second career, I got into, uh, you know, B2B enterprise sales. So back in the day, you go into the boardrooms, right? And so there might be 10 people that are decision makers and people who can influence a decision. I might have only met a couple. And, you you know, the big CEO would walk in like, hey, uh, let's go ahead and start your presentation. I've got maybe 45 minutes. Can you go ahead and get started? You're just like another person. Right. So I'm like, okay. I can't, you know, I started to learn, like, if I just like, okay, I'm so grateful to be here and go to my presentation, you could tell by their body language, it just viewed me at a lower status. So yeah, I'm like, yeah. how do I raise my status? Where even that CEO is like, whoa, they might be important. I'd be like, so I started doing little things. I'd be like, oh, geez, 45 minutes. You guys must have a lot of time on your hands today. I've got yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. 30 minutes before my next appointment with XYZ company. Should we go and get started? And you'd yeah. see the room like, like they're shifting, they're like, Whoa, geez. See, I'm taking that frame back. Absolutely. And, and, and here's where I go with that again, because, uh, you know, we want to pattern interrupt. And also we we want to we want to get information out of them. It's no good me talking all the time. I need yeah. them them talking. So so CEO goes, OK, you know, you can get get started. I'd be like, thank thank goodness. So good job you're here. Why was it that you decided to come to this meeting today? That's the key question is what is the issue that yeah. means that you attended today? Yeah. Because that's the reason we're yeah, all You here take the focus off well. you, you immediately put them yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, because if yeah, I can I'm get not... that CEO to go, look, the, the reason is, is we have a significant issue with X. It's like, fantastic. Yeah. And what else? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> well, it's, always, it's always about, you know, I'd always, you know, we train a, a lot of this with, um, you know, especially in, in B2B as well, besides B2C, but it's like reading the nonverbal communication from your prospect. So if I'm in a boardroom meeting, so I'd learn how to do this mm. quickly. And let's say that, you know, I go through slide 35, right? Right. I, and I can, you know, everybody's paying attention, but, you know, Gretchen over there, when I go through that slide, she kind of crosses her arms and she kind of, looks up like i don't understand or i don't agree or something you know what i mean it's like most sales people just keep going and hoping and praying the rest of the slides Whoa. convince him i'm just gonna immediately stop and i'm like hey 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 gretchen hey you seemed a bit um yeah. when, when i went through that last slide you seemed a bit hesitant what's what's yeah. behind that just so i understand well yeah. jeremy i'm not seeing how this is going to work with and now the concern is here now i can address it with everybody else because most sales people would have left and then Gretchen would have told everybody else we shouldn't do this. And then it's over. Yeah. So but, here's where I go with that. Yeah. So, so 
uh, yeah, I'm, I'm monitoring people's body language, but I also know I'm going to get overwhelmed by it and also not see enough of it. True. So, so, so I'm going to default to a lot of negatives. Yeah. And if I'm there trying to change people's behaviors, I don't need this talk in my head going, well, you, yeah. you know, this is terrible. They hate this. They're never yeah. going to change. They're never yeah. going to do what you, so I don't need any of that stuff going yeah. on. So, so what I do is stop every now and again and I go, okay, so I just want to check in with you. What has been the most, we're only five minutes into this. What has been the most impactful thing already that you've heard? Sure. Okay. Checking for agreement, right? You're yeah, but, I'm, but I'm, I've got them in a bind there because I didn't ask, has anything been impactful? Yeah, sure. I yeah. said, what has been the most impactful thing yeah. so far? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which means there's going to be even more impactful things. I love it. I'm just okay, I got, a, I got a couple more questions. This is really Go good. Tell it. us about the Go Behavioral Pattern YouTube channel and why you started with, uh, you got what, Chase Hughes? You, the Chase, FX, yeah, FX, Chase FX, and... and, and uh, and Scott and Greg, I, I always watch it when I'm ironing my clothes at night. Nice, I, love, I, I watch nice. it. I watch it. I just love it. Tell us why we, you do. We, that. we love, love hearing it. about what people do while they watch us. It's I like, love, I'm I'm ironing like, my clothes. I Some people are like, I go to sleep clothes. every night. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell, <laughs> tell us more yeah. about it. I want everybody to start watching. Well, it. look, we we got it together at the start of COVID because you know we weren't on the road anymore and we could actually sit down for for hours at a time and chat to each other via Zoom, yeah. and and we just thought it would be fun as body language analysts and people who are in the business of changing other people's behaviors and analyzing their behaviors to just have a chat about the subject of the day, which could be, you know, a politician or a, uh, you know, movie star or, or what have you. Yeah. And so, um, and so, yeah, it, and it just hit off in yeah. an incredible way. And we're now, uh, just yesterday, I think we announced that we're a network show on Dr. Phil's new network we're one of the yeah. first commissioned new shows for that for merit street media i love it i love it congratulations i, I literally i like i hear my clothes i turn i'm like go go my youtube channel with mark <laughs> all right now let's talk about what do you interpret in the body language of these world leaders i'm going to give you some names okay justin right. trudeau justin trudeau well okay yes. you know so so go I want you to get in trouble. I know yeah, you're in yeah, Canada. Yeah, I always have to be careful. I always have to be careful about it. Yeah. Uh, there's some really nice work that he did yeah. on how to shake hands uh, with Donald Trump. You you know about Donald Solid. Trump's yeah. handshake. Over aggressive. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very. Dominating. Very, yeah. very aggressive. Yeah. So somebody taught uh, Trudeau. I don't, I won't say who, but somebody taught him. Yeah. To move in at full speed and quick. lock out your hand, lock it out. Go in quick. Go in fast and yeah. lock it out, which yeah. means that the other human being will, will assess the amount of velocity coming yeah. in. Okay. And they won't want to try and do a pull because it means they're going to fall over. Yeah, they, they can gotta, only brace. They got to They Yeah, because they got to so brace. I, I actually saw that where you went over it because, like, Justin came in like so quick really fast Trump had to kind of like go like this and yeah. he grabbed him on the shoulder yeah so it shows like confused a little bit yeah yeah so so he so uh you know a good study there in how to in dis, uh, disrupt the pattern yeah come in at a with a pattern that the person hasn't ever been given before yeah yeah and it gives you just enough time to take control of the situation and yeah. embed commands and here's probably well, what it did is it probably in in uh, president trump's mind is it probably raised justin's status it is mine because trump always tries to dominate right lower status always tries to always tries so, to dominate when, yeah so when justin came in he raised his status because it, he broke that pattern that trump did well it, it you know the, the technicality is is that yeah. because it's an interrupt it creates space right. In the mind, it creates a moment where the human brain goes, "What do I do? Yeah, uh, so what's my response?" Exactly. And you can I loved tell it. them the response. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> okay, how about uh, uh, how do you interpret body language of President Biden? Yeah, Biden. Biden is 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 very much the preacher. Mm. Very okay. much, you know, the tent the tent preacher you know you know that he's he's getting into his his wheelhouse when he starts coming down what we call the center of the wheel plane with a okay. one-handed jet these chop gestures you know he's, he's really evangelical 
uh, 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 about it. So that's where, you know, if you want to see him performing well, yeah. you know, performing top of his game, you want to, you want to be looking to see, has okay. he started these chop gestures down the front Get of his it. body? He's it. He's into it. He's into it. That All right. Uh, okay. So what about President Trump? How do you interpret his body language? I think, you know, President Trump is one of the most interesting communicators that politics has had for a long, long time. Yeah. A long, long time. One yeah. thing I want you to pick up that he does um, is 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 confusion. Yeah. So yeah. he's very he's very good at doing asymmetrical gestures around the head and and spiraling gestures in different directions to yeah. create confusion and then goes into symmetry yeah and then states what he's going to do so yeah. we'll say what somebody else is going to do and yeah. create confusion yeah. yeah and then he'll go to symmetry and yeah. say what he's going to do we're going to build that the wall we're going to technically gonna yeah. yeah yeah i mean and then there's his his um his structures of message yeah. which are super simple and super easy to repeat i mean whether you like him sure. or dislike him yeah. you have to uh if you're smart yeah. <laughs> if you're smart you yeah. would have to respect mm -hmm. his ability to communicate else if you it wanted is. to go up against him you yeah. have no chance because he's yeah. He's yeah, especially, good. especially if you're on the side of the Republicans in the primaries, they're not going to have any chance for sure because he's got such a big folly. But it's so true because in 2016, I always watch all the the primary debates because I want to see how the the politicians are communicating. Their styles are so different. And you have like uh, Senator Rand Paul, who's very educated. He's yeah. you know he's they're talking about monetary policy and yeah. the Federal Reserve banking system and like nobody's voting for him. And then you have Trump with Let's build the wall. It's super simple. But it resonated right. because people are like, I can identify with that. Whereas Senator Paul might have been the most educated politician forever with policy, but he's talking about all these big terms and people can't latch on to that. It's, it's like well, in one and about, the other. Think yeah. about just how clever Trump's current debate strategy is. Yeah, exactly. Okay? Which is not showing up. Why do I need to? Yeah, why do I need to? I'm just not going to be there. Yeah. People often um, uh, miss out the nonverbal communication of not being there. Higher just status. how powerful it is. Ghosting. Yeah. Just I'm going to ghost this thing. So yeah. everybody goes, where are you? We're, yeah. we're, like, and so everybody's talking about it. Everybody's talking. It's like it's like he's not he's not showing up. It's like it's it's a brilliant, brilliant. He's the, he's the master maneuver. of the media talking about him all the time. Yeah. Even even in the last three years when he wasn't the president, everybody was talking about him all the time. Yeah. You know, whereas somebody that's not the president, let's say, uh, you know, President Clinton or President Bush or whatever, Obama, and they 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 they're not the president anymore. Nobody really talks about him that much. But it's like Trump has been the same for three years. Everybody's still talking about it. It's, it's, yeah. it's quite brilliant. The, the key is if you're in opposition to him, is if you yeah. treat him like if you if you frame him as a as a clown, you will you will absolutely end up the monkey in this. <laughs> You've got to have him in your mind as a very powerful adversary and and yeah. look at exactly what he's doing, what he's doing. and come up yeah. for, with a countermeasure for that. Yeah. Not an idea of, well, this is just a, a an utter clown and they'll make yeah. ridiculous mistakes. I wish I wish I could uh I wish you could train him some things. I wish I could help him some things because he's brilliant in one sense, but he also triggers a lot of resistance by what he says, different things, you know. Well, and and of a lot course. of his policies are really good, but on the other side, they don't even look at it because of they're already triggered. They can't even look at it. Of course. But again, in the systems, you don't need everybody to like you true you yeah. just don't you just and need to so, be able to pull some of them over yeah look Sweet. remember and this is no yeah maligning on the u.s because because many countries are similar but remember yeah. in in the u.s freedom is a choice of two right yes yeah, true that's valid <laughs> <laughs> which one yeah i totally which one you, you're Mark, free to choose either this one or this one. Exactly. Mark, you're a legend. Uh, I want everybody to, to to tune in. Where can they go to learn more about your training programs? This this podcast is all about, you know, we've got clients on here. We've got people that probably are not clients at all, but we want them to get better, sell more, communicate better. I always say, uh, you know, wars are fought because of the lack of communication.
Like yeah. communication is everything. You know, societies change because of lack of communication or great communication, positive or negative. So where do they go to learn more about your programs and to really dive in? Yeah, lovely. Just get yourselves over to truthplane.com, T-R-U-T-H-P-L-A-N-E, truthplane.com. And also we'll get a link to you uh, so that you can get some free training there and yeah. join in, have some fun. Okay. Yeah, we'll put your link in here, truthplane.com. And, you know, let's get get his book. You know, I, I just read one of his uh, best-selling books that just came out. It is called, I've literally just read so the, this. The, the I, even did a reel, I even did a reel about Truth it. Truth and Lies. I was in our uh, Sydney, I was in our Sydney, <laughs> Australia office back in December. And they're like, hey, what's a really good book that's not from like a sales trainer? So I'm like, hey, this book here. So it's Truth <laughs> and Lies. And why should they read that book? Uh, because actually... It's a book on critical thinking disguised as a book on body language. Mm -hmm. What it's really right. about is how you can think more accurately about yeah. people. Because yeah. for me, really, the whole route through body language is simply to understand people better, to get on with them better. Because it's yeah. our human nature. It's like we need to co-opt with people. We need to make deals yeah. with other people. And to do yeah. that, we have to get on better. Yeah, 100 percent. All right, everybody, make sure you go to truthplane.com, get whatever Mark is offering you. Look, if I'm buying his stuff, you might want to buy it too. Just say it. All right. And then if you guys want some other books here, make sure you go to Barnes and Noble. We got our Barnes and Noble bestseller now and our Wall Street World, uh, Wall Street Journal bestseller, New Model of Selling, Selling to an Unsellable Generation. Mark, your legend. Thanks Thank you. for thanks for being on with us. Now we're building out a new, they're moving us over to some bigger office space. We're building a whole podcast center there. We build it out. Wow. Why don't we have you come out here? I would I'd love to. I would love, love to have a couple hour conversation. I mean, I'm, okay, let's, let's, let's sit down and talk even more. It's been massive fun. Massive fun. I love it. All right, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for being on the show.